born in Springfield, Missouri. After graduation from high school, I was encouraged to come to Topeka, Kansas and enroll in a trade school. At that time, it was Kansas Vocational School. Uh, my father couldn't read or write, my mother, eighth grade. So we were, all the kids were encouraged to, to finish high school. But coming here to trade school, it was a step above. Coming to Kansas was a plus for me because of segregation in Missouri. Kansas was uh, maybe not wide open, but it was a far cry from Missouri there. They, it was segregated. Kansas uh, set where you wanted to on the local bus. Couldn't do that in Springfield. Restaurants, everything was segregated. So it was a quite a plus for us to come to Topeka and just live a different style. You wasn't concerned about, well, am I sitting in the wrong chair or sitting in the wrong spot? There was more blacks here, so there was more black-owned businesses that you could go to more than in Springfield. Fourth Street was the area that had a movie theater, primarily black two or three restaurants, barbershops. If you were looking for someone, 4th Street was where you went because they, your paths would cross sometime there, whether it was night or day. 4th Street was considered uptown because that's, that was the main drag. People that went to what we call City Park for the softball games, a lot of them wound up on 4th Street after the ball games. Blacks would have dances, but um, they were fun times. Let your hair down and have fun. <laughs> My father attended uh, college for two years. He was raised in a family where the people were educated. And uh, my mother finished the, the 10th grade, which was as high as blacks could go at that time. And uh, I was just excited to get away just to get away from uh, liberty to, to just the excitement of uh, going to college, as it was called. I had uh, graduated high school the spring of 51. My uncle drove me here onto this beautiful campus. KTI was and still is a beautiful campus, although it's not an educational facility now. But anyway, I was excited being away from home for the first time, <laughs> he was working and I was going to school. <laughs> uh huh. And uh, in about a year, I guess we uh, yeah. we hooked up. I think it was about a year, and uh, it worked out fine. <laughs> and uh, I graduated in '53. Uh, Two years later, we got married, and a year, <laughs> we had our first child. And the next year, we had a second child. Then in five years, we had our third child. Our two oldest girls were in uh, Washington grade school. That was uh, one of the black schools here. Mm -hmm. uh, they finished kindergarten, first and second grades there. And then they went to a mostly white school. That it, was their first integrated school? Yeah. The two oldest girls, their first integrated school, yeah. and uh, they just fit in just fine. They've just done very well since then. Our kids appeared to be accepted from the start of integration. 
I never heard them complain about anybody calling them names or doing doing anything destructive that you would think would happen or that has happened to a lot of kids. Uh, our, our kids, I think, were considered, the, oh, those Patterson girls, they're nice kids, you know. Our policy is it's available and it's up to you to get it. Nothing is going to be handed to you. You're to earn what's out there. The sky's the limit. And so uh, we've always encouraged them to always do your best. And people, if they see that you're motivated to do the best you can, they will encourage and help you. There's so many positive things happen now that wasn't available to minorities. But nothing is free. Nothing is free. Look at things from the positive side. You can be negative 24-7 if that's what you want to be. But there's so much out there that's positive that's 24-7 too. But if you find a barrier in front of you today, go right back tomorrow. That same barrier may not be there. You have to keep pressing on. You have to keep pressing on.